controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. So we're talking about intermittent fasting now because new research is coming in. Controversial subject. And I'm so anti it. You're so pro it. You're so fitness influencer over here. You think I'm the fitness influencer between the two of us? Yeah, because you're obsessed <laughs> with intermittent fasting. Anyways, Wait, what? the studies you're are the coming in, bro. folks. And you're we, a literal gym bro. No, <laughs> we are going to be talking about new research, interesting controversies around it, whether it's it even works, and if, in fact, it might be dangerous. Okay, well... On my high horse. Yeah, and I don't want you to act like it is because I have lots of other research to maybe suggest it's not. So it will stick around to okay. see that resolve. And the only reason I hate intermittent fasting is because I get migraines, so I can't not eat food. So it's not even ever going to be an can't option do for it. me. Okay, yeah. so I didn't realize that there were two types. Do you know what? Do you know about five, two? <laughs> <laughs> like two days not eating, five days eating? Well, five days you eat the normal amount of calories. So for men, they said 2,500. For women, 2,000. And then for two days, you go down to 800 calories. For men, mm -hmm. 700 for women. So I always thought intermittent fasting was just like th the other one, which is like either what I do, a standard schedule of eating across 12 to 16 hours, assuming you're sleeping per day versus you don't eating. Do that. I eat within 12 to 16 hours. Oh, sorry, but cutting. no, but intermittent fasting is. No, they're saying intermittent fasting is hours of not eating. I let. Or limiting your food intake to less than eight <laughs> Why hours is per the day. She's so off. Because right <laughs> I hate intermittent fasting <laughs> and I'm so biased. But okay, my point is I thought it was just that. I always thought mm. intermittent fasting was just eating within eight hours of the day and the rest of the yeah. time you're starving. But you can actually just my the, take a very is common that one is do it for five day five days normal, two days not. Yeah. I think that the sixteen hour fast, eight hour eating window, that adds up to twenty four, right? Um, is the more popular common like pop culture version hmm. i think most people th like because it's it's then it's super consistent it's just like you do the same thing every day you have an eight hour window where you're allowed to kind of not necessarily eat whatever you want but it helps continue well you food. kind of are i kind of am what you're like that's a big issue with intermittent fasting there's not any rules around what you're shoving in your noggin for those eight hours. I mean, for some people, there might be. What, pop tart, pop tart, pop tart. Wow, that <laughs> seems like a really good diet to me. Okay. That's not what everyone's doing. <laughs> okay. It's just, so that's one way. And you're right. There are, even some people might just do a full 24 hour fast once a week or once X amount of time. But I think this um, 16 hour, no eating, eight, eight hour window where you can eat is, what is we kind picture. of like what. When people say they're intermittent fasting, I think that's what a lot of people. It's what with. like Chris Hemsworth's doing or whatever. Yeah, um, and so that it's been obviously an very brought into pop culture. The idea being like it's good for your body to like go through these different stages of hunger. It's interesting because I and we went to university a very long time ago, so this information is like coming from you know like fifteen years ago. But our nutrition professor, I remember talking about. You know, in modern day, it's interesting that because we have, or at least in our world, like as, as like the privileged countries that have access to food so easily, we only really stay in like the first and second stage of hunger. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, but the human body naturally, like when you think of like hunter gatherers, I know not everything can be, can be compared to that, but sure can if you got a science podcast. Yeah, exactly. So people think about that. Okay. But like hunter gatherers would have had times when they were binging, when food was plentiful and then times when it wasn't and when they'd have to hunt again and their bodies would be going through stages of quote unquote not starvation or they just like, had sacks of nuts all the time and they were fine that's possible too <laughs> like i don't okay. know but i think that's the idea is we've kind of got like these four different stages where your body starts accessing different energy sources basically like when you first stop eating like in the first four hours you're using like glucose reserves that are just in your body right mm -hmm. that lasts for like up to 18 hours but then like between 12 to 38 hours after eating then you start using things like fat and lactic acid um once those liver reserves are used up after that you eventually shift maybe i skipped one here no but then ultimately I think a lot of people talking about fasting are like, we got to get into ketogenesis, where we're like using ketones as our source of fuel. 
So it says like run for the hills if you're on a date and anyone <laughs> brings this up. Continue. No, I just that's like the idea is that it switches your body and you're accessing. I think a lot of people think intermittent fasting like it then tackles my fat instead of using like my glucose stores. I'm like burning those out so then I can start to get to the fat. Hmm. And I think this is maybe where some of the misinformation can come from. I'm not saying that's wrong necessarily, but some of the studies are going to show that at the end of the day, you still have to be in a caloric deficit for your body to start tapping into like your other reserves. So if in your eight hour window, you're able to gorge yourself and actually still your having 4,000 calories and you only need 3,000, you're going to gain weight or you're, you're not going to be tapping into no. your like stores of fat. So I think that's why it's been a conversation of like, is this just a fad because it's like a way to calorie restrict? Well, okay, that's Which sort of the consensus. Okay. The consensus is, is, okay, I guess I'll start a little bit about the pros before I go <laughs> absolutely off on the con. Well, you can also just, like, take a breath. <laughs> we, this is not about science. You don't need to be angry. Like, I'm not trying to say it works or doesn't. I'm it's, just, like, <laughs> honestly, like, I don't know what is wrong with me, but it's, like, if anyone walked in that door, like, and was just, like, yeah, I'm intermittent fasting, I'd be, like, cool, I want to spin around and walk right out. <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm just, like, not interested in your personality. <laughs> But that is okay, a me protein issue. boy. Yeah, no, if they walk in and say, t- tell me that they eat a lot of protein, I'll be like, get on my knees. <laughs> Kidding. I don't know what's going on. That's insane. I just, I find this stuff so cringy. But the benefits that I read that I thought were the most interesting, and again, this is only rats or mice. So, like, mm. all you humans out there, like, chill. But it's about, I hate this word, autophagy, autophagy. Mm-hmm. Remember, remember Auto when you faggy? Yeah, remember like when you're gay in science <laughs> yeah, class and, and you, you have to that. say phagocytosis, and it's like, please don't. And make everyone me read looks that. at you. <laughs> please don't make me read that. And you're like, phagocytosis. You know a lot about that, don't you? <laughs> They're like, no, it's actually phagocytosis. No, it's not phagocytosis. <laughs> But this is autophagy. I'm pretty sure it's not autophagy. Okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure too. But, but every now and then a British person says something and you're like, yeah. wow. Like, that's how you say it? When I found out you don't say you're having a migraine, you have migraine. <laughs> that was like, I was like, is that just British? Or, but I'm certainly always on autophagy mode. But so tell us about it. Okay. So essentially it's like the process of cleaning up your cells. Picture lysosomes. Remember those for all you cell bio folks out there? The little like circles when you look at like a cell diagram that like (laughs) eats all like misfolded proteins and essentially like they recycle exhausted materials in your cells that's autophagy it's a very important process and what the research says is that when these rats and mice and worms are intermittent fasting or starved it forces like their cellular biology to create these really complicated processes to increase autophagy which in theory you can picture as like cleaning up your cells Mm -hmm. Which is like, okay, great. There's no way to know if that's what's happening in humans. But I think that is sometimes when people who love to extrapolate the fitness influencers are using that research to be like, it's cleaning up your cells. But we don't actually know that. Well, I would say there is some and has been research, like more broadly, again, this isn't necessarily so specific to intermittent fasting. And we've talked about hormesis before, like the idea of like exercise puts a level of stress on your body and that triggers parts of your, whether it be immune system or your like DNA to be activated that then like cleans you up and helps you. And and that's the idea with like cold plunges. And that's also the idea of intermittent fasting. Like, Which I do love a cold plunge. Yeah. And I think <laughs> at the end of the day, it's like you have to recognize that cold plunging, while may, there may be benefits, they're not like going to ch- totally change your life or totally change your health. They might change you mentally. They might give you a zing in the morning. They might give you a little bit of a boost. And I think intermittent fasting is similar. It's like you're putting a bit of a stress on your body that then actually triggers your body to react in a way. And that might stimulate some, like a lot of times this gets brought up in the context of anti-aging. Like it may actually stimulate parts of your body's like mechanism to protect itself, to clean itself out, to like, no, oh, we're in a stressful time. Okay. We got to like turn off these things that we don't need right now and turn on the things that are going to help us stay alive. Um, And so I think that's sort of the argument but like you said it gets extrapolated to sort of say intermittent fasting will not only make you lose weight it'll make you live forever it'll make you smarter it'll make you feel so good like 
it just gets like to me it's um, to the, the edge. i think that the reason that i hate it is that to me it's like it's it's like flex on my willpower vibes it's people being yeah. like oh yeah uh, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. i can just instrument it fast it's like it's like do you know how hard, do you know how fun and all my joy comes from food yeah. Like it's just like it's like oh so you're just able to n- like you're crazy. I'm actually thinking right now. Like don't like, tell me it's, it's easy. interesting. I think it's because you're white culture. I'm like do any <laughs> white cultures fast? Because like a <laughs> lot of like Indian culture yeah. fast. I feel like, like a lot of Muslim Middle Eastern culture are like fast. we do it every Ramadan. <laughs> yeah. You white fuck. And and a lot of like religious cultures, not just once a year, will have fasting as well. Part do you know of how tradition. much I am so down for ramadan <laughs> fasting i'm not talking about that when i'm picturing who i'm mad at they're white they're hashtag white they look exactly like me because i hate myself and they walk in the door and they're like i'm intermittent fasting ever heard of fasting and i'm like i'm not interested unless it's ramadan babe okay now i'm gonna absolutely blow your mind with the new research that's gotten it's on everyone's tongues and mm-hmm. i'm gonna read you this and you're gonna I don't know, gulp. Okay. <laughs> so a study on 20,000 adults from across the U.S., they followed them from 2003 to 2018. This came out in March. 2003 to 2018. 18. They just followed them and found that the people who, adhe- who adhered to the eight-hour-a-day eating plan had a 91% higher risk of dying from heart disease <gasps> compared to the people who followed the more traditional dietary pattern of eating their food across 12 to 16 hours. Uh, Micah Jaropa. That is a mic drop. Wait, a 90% increase. 91% of heart issues. Yes, of dying from oh, heart disease. In that 15 year window. Yes, the people who were literally intermittent fasting. Are How like, many people were in this study? 20,000. Oh, in America. I thought you were going to say 20. Yes. I was like, right. We're not doing like a 250. Okay, so now I'm going to go wow. through the issues. Okay. So wait, but. Yeah. <laughs> were they actually monitoring them like intensely? Okay, like, so no. It okay. was it was self reported. Self reported that they were intermittent 20, fasting is a lot. and there was no like okay, so obviously the people who wrote this article, which has not been peer reviewed yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, suddenly losing steam. I know, no, 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 I know. I'm picking the mic up <laughs> like, that I just actually, dropped. Actually, it was um, published in, I don't even know what, Breitbart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Are you kidding? Does that still exist? Let's um, not talk about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> It's like, okay. Moving on. So, it's not peer-reviewed. Do not come for me. I know, I'm picking the mic off the ground that I just dropped. Okay. But also, I'm actually not, and I shouldn't have said but I'm going to more reasons why there's issues. There's no causation obviously there was no sort of like socioeconomic status like linkedin there was no understanding of like stress levels Uh one thing they mentioned that i thought was really interesting was like who's to say these people aren't more likely to have an eating disorder Mm, like and that's something we can get into which is like is this disordered eating? Like, yeah, it's I kind of like, uh, um, I have a study that addressed that as well. And I will just say that that and diabetes were the two things they brought out is like, it can actually in this particular study, it was like, it can be a useful tool, but it's a, a risk for people who have like specific health issues, health issues like diabetes and people. with eating Well, disorders. they were saying even, so. they were saying that in this, um, 20,000 person study, <laughs> even people who already had heart disease or cancer, the, the intermittent fasting also increased their risk of dying. So like people who already had issues, it made it worse. It's say, say that again, sorry. Essentially, like what you're saying, like if you have diabetes or an eating disorder, intermittent fasting is probably a bad idea. Yeah. This study went on to say that if if you had cancer oh, or yeah, heart disease, well. okay. But then the cancer thing's interesting because there are some doctors and studies that found that if you have a severe version of cancer, where like you're getting to the point where nothing's working or no medication, you should talk to your oncologist about intermittent fasting because there's some science around the idea of like cancer cells love to eat glucose and like love Mm. and while you're doing chemotherapy there have been some pretty cool Mm. studies that are like intermittent fasting helps the chemotherapy but in other cases it doesn't so it's like obviously talk to your doctors for all of this stuff actually talk to your doctors about intermittent fasting because it's like don't just do this because you might be predisposed in some ways but yes they also found that what happened is that people who intermittent fasted who were or sorry they don't actually know this they're trying to create causation from why people who are intermittent fasting in the study are dying more yeah. than people yeah. who are eating normally. And one theory they had was this whole idea of like muscle mass and that the people who intermittent fasting, one thing they did study was that they had lower muscle mass. Mm. And as you get older, that's that whole thing of like, you yeah. need to have muscles so you don't fall so yeah. that you don't like, so yeah. it's kind of interesting. It's like, Oh, if you're intermittent fasting and you're older, 
like you, you might, might be at a risk for a like falling. hurting yourself. Yeah. yeah. And then I was like, okay, tearing a rug out of this little thing that I already am biased against. Well, um, that is interesting <laughs> because it is like a lot of fitness people who are interested in it. And I did also come across some research. I'm going to talk some about some of the good things as well, but I'll also agree that they say when you inter intermittent fast, like your rate of muscle loss is higher than if you were to just like, you know, slowly do a calorie deficit that was more controlled. But um, also, sorry, the last thing I'll say is that when it comes to weight loss, the only reason that they think there is weight loss, and this was from a meta analysis, is just that people are eating less calories because they have less time to eat. Yeah, that's, I think people know that though. Oh. Duh. Okay, I thought no, that it right. was like people like being like, there's something happens. special. Like, they're like, you're no, right. if you're you eat right. the same calories over 12 to 16 hours versus eight hours, yeah. you have the same, like, I, it's just like, you're just limiting your ability to eat. Yeah, but okay, I'm gonna say two things. Okay. One, I have a really interesting. Okay, you're yelling. That. I'm oh, kidding. No, I'm agreeing. With you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm you're like, I'm yelling. On something today. It's certainly not fasting, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> no, I eat all the time. Um, okay, so there was a study on 116 like obese people. It was a randomized clinical trial, like really good quality. The half had to eat within their eight-hour window. Half had three structured meals, so like, like through the day. Hashtag white culture. Yeah, but ultimately they found that there was no difference. Like as long as you're calorie restricting, you can lose weight. The thing about intermittent fasting is it is hard for people to calorie restrict. And for a lot of people, it is, I know this is not the case for you, but for a lot of people, like skipping breakfast, for example, is easier than trying to like... For me, I'm this way. Once I eat, now I'm going to be hungry the rest of the day. But if I wake up, I'm not really that hungry. Girl, in the I have never seen anyone eat a bigger breakfast than Because you. I was trying to bulk. <laughs> okay? I was you, like honestly, forcing myself to eat you breakfast. Should, like, you should like get... Do I look fitter? Yes. Be honest. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Someone tell me. Okay, Am I bigger than Greg? <laughs> are, you are. <laughs> like in this view, we're looking at ourselves. No, wait. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's because I'm, I'm in a no, different... No, you're absolutely <laughs> wider than me. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, I've always been broad. Um, but you, um, yeah, you are bulking. Is that what you mean? I was forcing myself to eat breakfast. Like, I've added that as like, you, oh, I was trying to build some muscle. You should and get ready with me. As I eat, <laughs> you think like, I should do that? <laughs> insane. Like, every morning I come down, I'm like, has some, like, French chef been here and made, like, <laughs> there's, like, 17 ingredients, and then you've... It's, it's not that it's, hard. Okay, it's an egg-like concoction that's like the size of a medium pizza. <laughs> it's, no, I'm not, like, I know people think I'm exaggerating because I exaggerate everything, but it's huge. It's so big that you have to, like, cut it into, like, fours. <laughs> oh it's, God. it's like, and then you just sit there and you're always in, like, you're always, like, in such a bad, like, because you, like, are not a morning person. <laughs> you're always, like, in a bad mood eating, like, 18 at, what's in it? You tell me what's in it. There's okay. cartons of egg whites. It's like we're going a little off topic here, but no, I it's not. It's you eating I've, breakfast. You're not intermittent fasting for someone who's so pro intermittent fasting. You've got to. I've eat. spoken on the pod before about how it's been very helpful in my life to have the same breakfast and lunch every day, so I don't have to worry about it. I just get up. I always have the ingredients. So just I explain what it is. My breakfast is <laughs> two eggs, but how? then a third egg whites, like a third a cup of egg whites. Okay. Then I put in a quarter package of tofu as well then i also mix in like a tablespoon or two of hemp seeds and a tablespoon or two of um nutritional yeast okay that's what, what, the why omelet. what's those because they have protein in them oh and i was like God. oh one seeds and one like it's just like trying you to get a are of wider than me then one piece of toast with a bunch of um greek yogurt on it you know it's kind of like giving cream cheese vibes but it's healthy then on that i like to put some kimchi and then you put that egg concoction on top of that. And then I make like a little sauce on the side. That's like the unhealthy part. It's just like mayo and mustard and hot sauce and stuff. So and then, how many like grams of protein is that? It's maybe between 40 and 50, 35 wow. to 45 or something like that, depending on like, you know, my pores or like how much I'm putting in that day. Or so I was not exaggerating. Like people who are listening are like, damn, that's a breakfast. Yeah, because I was like, I, I just like wanted to see what would happen if I could put like as somebody who was vegetarian, I'm not right now, but for there was a time when I was like, it's really hard to get a breakfast or enough protein in the day. Can you start making it for me? No. Why not? Because <laughs> you wake up an hour and a half after that me. That is not true. <laughs> um, I guess I kind of do intermittent fast because I sleep for like 17 hours. 
Okay, we're going back to intermittent fasting. So what I was going to say, I'm somebody who can miss breakfast. Maybe it'd be harder now because I've made a really good habit of eating breakfast. And you eat 14 eggs. But growing up, I would often just be like, oh, I'm not feeling breakfast this morning because I don't get that hungry. Like when I'm eating that egg meal, sometimes I am like, I I don't want to eat this. Yeah, you look absolutely (laughs) mortified and depressed every time you're eating it. I'm like, because it's a lot of food. Anyway... So then people just have an eight hour window and, and your stomach's a certain size. So it's like your body's used to eating only a certain amount at once. So if you only have a window to eat that, you're only going to have a pretty normal meal once or twice mm-hmm. or twice, you know? So I think that makes it a lot easier. That's what intermittent fasting does to people. They're like, they can manage or minimize their calories because they're not eating as many times. Hmm. Whereas for me, if I eat breakfast, now I can't go like another eight hours without eating. I'll be hungry for sure at lunch. I'm always hungry at lunch, hmm. but I can skip breakfast and then my day would have way less calories. Yeah. For someone who's so obsessed with the idea of intermittent fasting, I, you, I've literally never done I'm it. I'm kidding. I'm saying, yeah, like you've never even done that. Naturally. I did it growing up. Cause I often like, I, I really don't like cereal for breakfast. I don't like, I need something savory. I don't like sweet. So I've always kind of like so many breakfast options are sweet. That's why you had a pogo every morning. Yeah. Pogo or like, I guess Eggo is kind of sweet. Wait, so sometimes you, you're you you're just claiming you intermittent fasted as a kid because you just didn't eat Yeah, and all through university and stuff, I was just like breakfast, breakfast. Was, <laughs> breakfast was never really like on my list of priorities. Oh, it's like the biggest part of my life. Yeah, Greg will like die of migraine <laughs> when he doesn't eat. If I don't eat like Irish oats, um, it's disgusting. One interesting thing I want to bring up is there's been research on the impact of intermittent fasting on Alzheimer's. Now this research was done in mice. So take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. And that's thing you should all remember. It's all mice folks, except for the one in humans where you die. Okay. Continue. (laughs) It's not all mice. (laughs) This study is. Yeah. Sometimes it's worms. (laughs) What are you on today? (laughs) Um, a lot of times what happens in mice, then we can replicate that in humans in a safe environment and it can be similar, but this is, gives us a little insight. So, they found that intermittent fasting improved the cognitive function of mice hmm. and decreased Alzheimer's symptoms. Now, hmm. these mice are like transgenic mice, so they've been altered yeah. like, to have Alzheimer's. Um, they found that intermittent fasting altered their gut microbe to change it in a really specific way that the bacteria like improved and created. Hmm. Uh, it was like it led to a decreased carbohydrate, carbohydrate metabolism and an increased abundance in amino acids like sarcosine and dimethylglycine and apparently these are good things um so that was interesting like it like you said with certain cancers maybe it's not the right choice but it's worth studying like is there yeah, a scenario with where this yeah. this is like a good thing um for be for like the mice that are transgenic mice to already have alzheimer's yes exactly yeah but maybe if you're predisposed like your doctor if, if that research can be replicated and shown yeah. in humans maybe doctors could start saying like it might be worth you considering intermittent yeah. fasting if you're at a high risk for this. Now there are other benefits that have been found from intermittent fasting. Um, outside of weight loss, which we've clarified is because of the calorie restriction, not because there's some magical thing about fasting. One, a lot of people say they have a lot more energy and feel a lot more clarity of mind. Oh, give me a break. Why won't you accept that? Oh, because it's just, oh my God. Because you don't like it. No, it's okay. so, it's so man intermittent fast and gets asked, oh yeah, clarity, clarity, grumble, grumble. Okay. He can't focus. I, he's starving. I can't take this seriously <laughs> from somebody who does cold plunges and is like, oh, I do cold plunges because I enjoy them. I'm not saying yeah, that they give me clarity. That's the same thing. Feeling more energy and feeling clarity. <laughs> you could call that enjoyment. Okay, fine. <laughs> okay. Improved blood pressure, lower resting heart rate, increased insulin sensitivity, steady blood sugar levels, and improved skin are things that have been found in studies. Now, I'm not saying you were going to get all those things if you intermittent fast, but that's yeah. some positives. Um, they also think it helps you sync with your natural circadian rhythm better, which can improve sleeping huh. because your metabolic like processes are all kind of like in sync with Yeah, and I do sleep. like dummy like a bowl of cereal and like 7,000 like all right before bed, like right before bed. And sometimes I'm in bed, just like farting and like tossing and turning. And I'm like, this is probably not. Yeah. Right. Your metabolism is different when you're sleeping. And so it's like eating right before bed is not. So I shouldn't, so I should, some not. people try to stop eating after six, but I could never do that. 
Like if I st- if I eat my dinner at six by ten p.m., I'm starving. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm always like I can't sleep if I'm hungry. So then I'm just like eating. So yeah, much it food. is hard. Uh, in that sleep book, it is like you have to find the Goldilocks amount. Like going to to bed. Like if you are fasting, your sleep will usually be worse because your body's kind of like aware that you like need to like get food. So it can impact your sleep quality, but so can eating before bed because hmm. your digestive system is now like yeah like working. working. So it's like finding that balance. Um, but some people say like some people do f- fast for two to three days or for like a week. Some people like the, what the researcher in one of these things is saying once a year, he won't eat for seven days. Isn't that crazy? Wait, what? And they were saying after the two to three day mark, you get Who? like Who said a that? runner's high. It was just like one of the researchers. Huh, sounds like a biased person to me. <laughs> so they were saying at the three day mark, you become euphoric, which is like what people on Survivor say. Oh my like you, gosh, that's why you like intermittent fasting because it, it just uh, no, that's just mirror pure survivor. <laughs> oh my god, a, oh, that's a runner's <laughs> high or whatever. I'm never gonna experience if I, if I don't eat for three days, I'm gonna feel good. Well, I'm not saying I want that either, I'm just saying people report that the first two to three days you're hungry all the time, but then eventually your body kind of just like gets used to it. Is and this is not eating. Just not eating. Not even like doing intermittent fasting, just like not just eating. Just not eating, just full fasting, yeah. Oh my God, I would never do that. Have you, did you not do that as a kid? Like you guys didn't have fast, like 24 hour fast? What? Is this a Catholic school thing? Oh, oh no. Did you not do that? We would like sleep no. at our school and not eat for 24 hours and you, maybe it was like Lent or something. No, that's you, giving Christian. Then you would like get pancakes at or, eight in the morning. It, yeah, oh no, I remember pancakes. See, I, all I remember is eating. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we did not fast before we ate our pancakes. Yeah, we would do a 24-hour fast. I guess it was like... Trove Tuesday, I think, is what it was called. Probably like related to Jesus starving. Yeah, no, I think it makes sense. Like starving for spirituality is more interesting to me. Even yeah. that's more interesting to me. Like you raised money for Jesus and then you ate pancakes after. Like that's fine. Yeah, and I guess it is like you're, you're meant to be put in the headset of like lots of people don't have this. So like by depriving yourself of it for a bit, you can be more appreciative for is it. Is that what it, it was? That was part of it. Yeah, that's what they would teach us. Oh my God. Like lo- they would be like lots of people the in the Catholic world have school like versus this. public school episode <laughs> is coming up because the way you said well, that was so high and mighty. No, no, I there's hate. poor people in the world, so Let- we would cosplay like starving for 24 hours, and then eat pancakes. Greg, lots of people do that. What do you mean? That's why people fast sometimes to like show to remind yourself that like you could have less. Okay, I'm so flip floppy, and I'm like, I like that actually. <laughs> No, I like that. I think it's important to fast for spiritual reasons okay. as long as you're not Catholic. And, so, and you're like pushing yourself and seeing what your body experiences in 24 <laughs> hours is like, there are lots of people who don't get to eat every 24 hours that it's like, at least you can experience that to like have empathy Yeah, and be grateful for the things you have. I'm not, I'm not justifying. Like I did not like going to Catholic school. Let's be clear. I was a little queer who was like, yes, Yes, pastor. <laughs> okay, that's so disturbing. Um, I feel like I haven't ever not eaten food for long. Like you've never fasted? No. Huh. Like I don't even know what you mean. Like fasted? Like have you? <laughs> you mean just because when you did the twenty-four hour and then you ate yeah. pancakes? Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I never. Like did I that. know I've spent many times like not t- eating for twenty-four hours for to raise money or whatever through school. Yeah. Like it's yeah. never like been a health thing or a never a health thing for me oh i've never gone to colonoscopy don't you have to do it for that don't you have to like i don't don't think for 24 hours but like it's for like the 8 to 12 hours before but still that might be a time where someone might be like i didn't eat for a long time Mm -hmm. we should try it intermittent fasting or we should like do a fast for 24 hours i mean that's very youtube i tried intermittent fasting no we wouldn't film it i think you would die Excuse me, I would not die. <laughs> you would just, you would have a migraine and you'd be like, I can't yeah, do yeah. it. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, I would definitely give up. I, but, but it is like, it is YouTuber. Is that what you mean? Like, do a video? But it's I don't very, do a video. no, it's YouTuber like four years yeah, ago. Yeah, I don't mean, I mean for our, our own selves to just, just like to try. Ourselves. Yeah, so then it's a no for me. I'm okay. not going to do that. But I would love to watch Join you. Join a religious, spiritual community. Yeah, I would do it. it if I, I would do it if, yeah, if I ever become Muslim and like I do could it for Ramadan, do it I would do it. If I ever become Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it would happen before I became Catholic, that's for sure. I 
I do I do get really bad headaches when I don't eat properly though. Like sometimes there have been times when I forget breakfast and then I actually go past lunch to like 3 p.m. and I am like, oops, but then I know because then it's like there's no recovering because I'll have a, ha- a crazy headache. Yeah, you are like sometimes like an actual child when it comes to eating. You'll be like, I'm in the worst mood. Today sucks. <laughs> and then I'll be like, did you eat lunch? And you'll be like, no, I forgot. <laughs> lunch and breakfast. And I'd be like, oh, honey, you need a granola bar. That's literally happened. Like you're better now because you eat like 48 eggs for breakfast. <laughs> but before you would just like do crazy shit like that. You'd be like, I'm so headachy. And, and, and then you'd be like, I didn't eat. And I'm like, how did you get here? <laughs> because I get like, really sucked in. When I'm focused on work, especially nowadays, it's like I don't. <laughs> but you do weird things. You'd be like, but I wanted to go to the gym and I didn't want to be f- too, hung- f- too full at the gym. And like, you'll have like weird things. that, like, Yeah, because it's called being neurotic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I'm like, well, I've eaten seven meals and already. That's called being like, you're a balanced human with <laughs> balanced hormones and emotions. Like you can manage your life. And sometimes <laughs> I'm just like, I, yeah, have weird things. Well, you're thicker than me now. So <laughs> no, I'm actually not. Yeah, you are. No, but you're like, you're crazy. I'm People, not crazy. When, when our friends have recently seen Greg, they were like, oh my God, you look like Thor. <laughs> okay, that happened <laughs> once and obviously I'm still hanging on to it. It's just because I'm white and have a bigger beard. <laughs> no, they were commenting on your jackedness. Okay, well, obviously I'm like, <laughs> you've I'll always take been it. so fit. That is not true. Yeah, it is. Oh my God. <laughs> Literally me going like shy girl <laughs> being like, stop. <laughs> That's not true. Hitting you like, say it again, say it again. Well, whatever. In this lens, you look wider than me. It's because I'm wearing a bright shirt. Anyway, let's, I think that's all I have to say about intermittent fasting. I think, I think if you want to try it, you can try it. I think something I came across is like, there's not enough research on the potential pitfalls. So, (laughs) well, there's research to say like, it could do some of these good things. I think like be realistic. I think it can be a great tool, like any diet, if you're trying to like calorie restrict or just like get it quote unquote under control. That's what most and it's diet definitely like are. overblown. And the reason that I wanted to do this episode now was from that study that ha- that was mm. like people died early. Yeah, yeah. That, so it's I, like, I actually didn't read that study. Or yeah, it's events. really new. It's like if you type in intermittent fasting into Google now, you're going to see nonstop like Washington Post, New York Times because it's yeah. like everyone did grasp onto it because it was kind of like, wait a second. We definitely didn't think it would like kill you. Yeah. (laughs) But we thought it would maybe be definitely not as legit as everyone says. Like everyone obviously thought that, but then again, it's not peer reviewed. There's obviously other things going on here. And I do think it's just like the reason I thought it was interesting was like, just always be skeptical of fitness influencers and fads and all diets diets and everything. And it's just like, this one, for whatever reason, I thought was getting away with like murder of like no criticism. So when I read that article, I was like, we're doing an episode yeah, because it's interesting when there's like actual evidence that's counter to what people yeah. are saying rather than just being like, it's not going to like save your life the way everyone yeah. thinks it is. Yeah, I think it's important to hear that because then you can have a measured response to your own decisions. And then on top of it all, it's just like, I don't know. I like going to a restaurant, eating food, like, isn't it the best joy of life? Yes, like, but... But then I'm like, is both it of not us, for people who intermittent fast? Like they, they actually can give that up for like six hours of the day? No, like, they might... Yeah, they might still go to fun restaurants and stuff. Just like Your window could be whenever you want. Six. Yeah, what if your window's true. two to ten? You know what I mean? Like, you can decide that on your own. I went to so and, many good restaurants this weekend. Okay. And it was like, I was like, is this all that matters? Like it I was think so that until, fun. I think that until there's times when I've gone to like out to eat too often in a row. And then I'm like, it's just food. But when I like make food for a good amount, when I'm like eating healthy and trying to be good, then like a meal out is so much more yummy. Mm-hmm. Cause you're like, I actually could never do this at home. Well, actually I think it's cause we live in Toronto and so you have endless opportunity for amazing food. And I happened to choose three slay ones in a mm. row that it was just like in Toronto, you probably could eat out every night and actually it'd be so interesting and fun. Like there's so many. Different yeah. And these foods, happen to just yeah. be like, you know, restaurants. Yeah. Fonda Belém was one of them. I loved it. If you're in Toronto, such a hype. We had to wait two hours for our seat. And when I walked in, I was like, um, no, this is like, <laughs> it looks kind of, I didn't go by the way. Boring. It, like you walk in and you're like, oh, okay. Like it's like hospital lighting <laughs> and kind of like hospital seating. It's like stools, like no backs. 
Oh, I can And I'm waiting that. two hours, and now I have to go, like, spend money Stools on drinks. Jules is no max. I think that's bad. Exactly. So when it I, was bad. No, but it doesn't mean the food's bad, but No, I, no. The food was amazing, is my point, is that, like, <laughs> I was mad about that to the point where I'm like, you're, I'm mad you're at you. If you're a restaurateur or a cafe, you just, just please, for the people with weak backs, just please put backs on your stools. There's lots of stool options with backs. I think they were trying to be like, we're a diner, I roll. So, like, it but was. But you can have a stool with a back on Yeah, it. but then it doesn't look like a diner. It looked like a diner. To be fair. Yeah. So it looked like a diner and it looked bad and I had to wait two hours because you couldn't make reservations and I was angry. Some might say hangry. It was totally worth it. Love it. Fonda Belem, mm. full, whatever. And then the other one was Imanishi, mm. yeah, which you can now make great. reservations for. Absolute slay of a restaurant. Yeah. And sometimes you're just like, I'm in Toronto and I don't need to be anywhere else because these are world scale restaurants. Yeah, for sure. Well, do you have anything else on intermittent fasting? Shall we take a little break? Um, no, we can come back and My talk My foot has it. fallen asleep and I've got pins and needles. Uh, Probably because you didn't need enough today. Okay, we'll take a break. <laughs> 